Hi, I'm Hector Perez from Dev School. Today I'm very excited because the release candidate version of .NET MAUI has been finally released. And this news has been extended through a blog post from .NET team. And basically it's indicating here that they are announcing the availability of this release candidate version. What does this mean? Well, it means that the SDK as such is now complete on the API side. It is really so that the different libraries that want to solve the problems related to .NET MAUI can update to this version of .NET MAUI and also follows the path to the GA version or general availability for the compatibility part. And it also tells us that as part of the other versions of .NET in its release candidate format, this release version also supports a go-like policy, which means that .NET MAUI is supported by Microsoft for production applications. This means, of course, that you can now start producing production-ready applications. The APIs will no longer change as much as they did in the preview versions. In other words, we can now start producing content for learning. We have here, as part of this publication, some information about .NET MAUI. For example, how to perform the installation, some instructions to perform its installation on the Mac, and other information of interest that we will be seeing throughout this course. I will be gradually releasing material for you to learn how to create applications with .NET MAUI. We're going to have a whole complete course about different things you can do with .NET MAUI. We're going to create a lot of applications. We're going to do a dedicated .NET MAUI track so you can learn everything you need to create cross-platform applications with this brand new technology. And also as part of the information that's been released, we see that as part of the planning for .NET MAUI, we have the RC1 version, which is the one that was released today. And we're going to start this training so that you can learn how to use and get specialized in the world of .NET MAUI. I hope you are as excited as I am to start this training. The first thing we're going to do is to install the version that will allow us to work with .NET MAUI projects or templates. We are going to go to this special Visual Studio site where the preview versions of Visual Studio are hosted. Unfortunately, .NET MAUI is not yet available for use within Visual Studio in its stable version. We have then to download a preview version where the updates that will be released will be hosted until .NET MAUI has a general version. To download this version of Visual Studio, we have to go to the URL visualstudio.microsoft.com slash vs slash preview. Anyway, I'm going to leave you this link as part of the links of this lesson. And once we are on the site of the 2022 preview version, and I also want to emphasize that this video will be updated as soon as the official version of Visual Studio is released with the update to be able to develop with .NET MAUI without having to wait for preview versions. So let's click on this button that says download preview. We have different versions that we could use and as in other trainings, we're going to download the community version since it is the free version. Let's click on this option. Let's wait a few seconds while the installer starts downloading. Here we have the installer. I'm going to click on this option that I downloaded. Okay, we click on continue. And this begins the update of the same installer so that it downloads the necessary components to always have the last version of the installer. I also want to emphasize that this version of Windows in which I am doing this training is a completely clean machine. It has nothing installed so you can see the process from scratch. We can see the classic installer that we had previously with the different workloads that we could select to carry out some specific type of development. As part of mobile development with .NET, notice that we currently have the Xamarin option that we had previously, but additionally an option that says .NET MAUI Preview appears here. Let's leave this option selected, let's click on install and start the download process. And if you have never used Visual Studio before, this is the process that follows. Normally it downloads all the files, all the components and installs them as the components are downloaded. So let's take a few minutes to download and install the ID in its preview version. Another point to take into account is that if you want to try the preview version on your machine where you develop, you can normally do it without any problem. It will install an isolated version of Visual Studio Preview that will not affect the operation of your currently installed version, which is the stable version. Then you can do it without any problem. 
I do it this way because I wanted to demonstrate the installation process of Visual Studio Preview as such and I wanted you to see it. And that's it. After a few seconds, we see that the installation of Visual Studio has been completed successfully, so we are ready to continue. Once the installation of Visual Studio has been completed successfully, you will get this dialog box to sign in to a Microsoft account, and you may be wondering what this is going to do for you. Well, as part of the description of this message tells you, it will help you, for example, to synchronize the different configurations between devices, that is, if you choose a Dart theme, for example, in this instance of Visual Studio, and then log on to a different computer, that same configuration with the font size, with the backgrounds you choose, and other colors, will go to that new instance of Visual Studio that you have installed. It will also allow you to collaborate in real time with a feature called Live Share and will allow you to use Azure services, so you can deploy, for example, a service you need. And as a last point, although they don't mention it here, but it's very important for you to know, is for you to get a key to use this software, because if you don't register or if you don't log into the Visual Studio service, you're practically going to lose access after a month or so. So let's proceed to log in. I'm going to quickly type in an email account and password for this email. Once we have logged in, we see that this first Visual Studio window is launched which will allow us to clone repositories, open in projects, open a local folder, create new projects, and so on. Then we are ready to continue. Once we have logged in with a Microsoft account and we have installed Visual Studio, let's proceed to create a project to see how the initial project looks like with .NET MAUI. Let's click on Create New Project, and we have here a set of different templates that we could use for different types of developments. In our case, we are interested in developing for different devices, that is, we want to use the .NET MAUI platform. We can filter in the part that says all project types, we have here an option called Precisely MAUI, which will show us the different templates available for programming with this platform. Let's select .NET MAUI app preview to see how this template looks like. We'll click on next, and as part of the project name, we can leave this name by default, since we are only going to examine how the project looks like, and we click on the option that says create. Once the project has been created, we see that in the lower left part, we see this message that says that the new Git packages are being restored. Therefore, we're going to give it a few seconds while it finishes its restoration. After waiting a few seconds, we see that the restoration has been completed and we get this message or this window that tells us that we must accept the license for the use of the Android SDK. Let's indicate that we want to accept this license. And if you have not previously installed the Android SDK, it will start the process to start downloading the corresponding SDK so that we can create applications based on this platform. So let's give a few more seconds while this process is finished. Once the task has been completed, we're going to proceed to compile this project to see that everything works correctly. Let's right click on the MAUI app one project, click on build, and let's see what happens. After a few seconds, we see that the process has been completed successfully. We can know this because in the lower left part, it tells us that the project is ready. And also in the output window, it tells us that a project has been successfully built. In .NET MAUI, we're going to have a single project that is going to host each of the configurations for each of the platforms. See then that we have a single project and within this project we have some sections or some files that we already previously knew if we had worked with Xamarin. For example, the dependencies part. We have here dependencies for each of the platforms from Android through iOS, Mac Catalyst and Windows as well. Windows already takes a very relevant role as part of .NET MAUI, unlike Universal Windows Platform, which was a platform that was no longer very much considered in the Xamarin world. We also have as part of this project a section called properties, and notice that previously we did not have a JSON file that appears in this template, which will allow us to carry out different configurations. We also have as part of this project a folder called platform, which actually houses the content for each of the platforms that we specifically have. 
Each of these folders contains additional information specific to that platform. For example, this folder called Android contains this well-known folder called Resources. We have the AndroidManifest.xml file, we have MainActivity.cs, and we have a new class that we haven't seen before in Xamarin called MainApplication. We're going to look at this class later. We have as part of iOS, for example, the app delegate class. We have the info.plist. We also have a class called program, which is also part of this project. We have as part of Mac Catalyst, some similar files on the iOS platform. And finally, as part of the Windows platform, we have some feature files, such as app.saml, the application manifest for the Windows package. And basically these are the different platform specific ones that we can further customize and modify to do what we need them to do. We also have a new section called resources, and these resources are resources that are going to be common throughout the project. For example, previously we had to add some font either in each of the specific projects or add to the common project and register it in some file. But now with .NET MAUI, we can already have a single place where we are going to register each of the elements that we need as part of the application, as is the case of the fonts. So we have a fonts folder, a folder called images, a folder called raw, and we have some SVG files that will allow us to adapt an image to different device sizes. We're going to be looking at those files as we go through the course. We also have some files that you will get to know little by little, such as the app.saml file. In this file, we could configure some common resources to the whole application, as for example, to define dictionaries of resources to define some type of visual appearance in the elements of the application. We also have a file called app shell, which basically defines a type of visual appearance based on shell, which you are also going to know throughout the course. And as part of the content of this shell, we basically define some features like the title, for example, a content template, which basically defines what is the initial content page for this page. We also define the flyout behavior. That is, what is the behavior of that window that you can drag from the left side to the center of the application. And we also see a path that is specifying how we can access to this page. We also have a page called main page. This page is a content page. Also, if you don't know about this, later we will see it. And as part of this content page, which is the demo content page, we have some graphical elements such as a scroll view, we have a label element, we have a button element, an image element. And as I said before, if you do not know these elements, don't worry, we will see them as we go throughout the course. We also have a class called Maui Program, which is basically an initial class that will allow us to carry out some configuration of the application. For example, here looking quickly, we see that we have an option to be able to configure which are the fonts that we would like to use in the application. And just as we are configuring fonts, we could configure other elements that again, we are going to see throughout the course. So this is what a .NET MAUI application looks like at first glance. And we're going to see then how we can run this application on an emulator in the next video. It's now time for us to deploy this application on an emulator. How can we do this? Well, first of all, how can we select on which platform we're going to deploy the application? Well, as part of this button that we are seeing here, we have different options. By default, it appears to us that the Android emulator is going to be the emulator that is going to be launched when we deploy the application. That is to say, the Android application is configured to be the default application to be launched or executed. We could select that, for example, we would want the Windows machine to be the initial deployment device for the application. If we make this change, notice how precisely the device we're going to target changes as part of this deployment. You could also select the option that says framework and here appear the different frameworks or the different platforms to which you could deploy the application. For example, I could select the iOS platform and I get the option to connect to a remote device. I don't currently have a Mac machine attached. So this option would ask me for some additional requirements. Let's select that we want to perform the deployment on an Android platform and let's proceed to click on the button that says Android in the editor to see what happens. 
If you get this window that we see here, select the option that says yes. And this is because it's going to start this window that will allow us to manage different Android devices, which we will be able to manage from the same Visual Studio. This window appears where we see a preselected option of a device that we could create to carry out different tests. We're going to indicate that we do want to create this device. We're going to click on the option that says create. We will see this license agreement. We're going to indicate that we agree with the agreement and this will start the process for the creation of the device, which basically involves downloading the image from the internet to later carry out the installation in a virtual emulator. Let's give it a few seconds while this process finishes. And after waiting a few seconds, we see that the device has been successfully created. Therefore, we can click on this button that says start, but we get this message that says that unfortunately Hyper-V is not configured. How can we enable it? Well, we have as part of Windows a tool called Windows Features. You can find it by searching for the term turn Windows Features on or off. And as part of those features, we have precisely this feature called Hyper-V, which we can select and carry out its subsequent installation simply by selecting it and clicking on this option that says OK. This will start the installation process of this feature. Now, a very important point is that this feature is only enabled for devices that have a professional license. That is to say, if you have a home version, unfortunately this function or this feature will not work for you. And another important point is that your processor must have the option enabled or it must have the hyper threading feature. Once the feature installation process has finished, it tells us that we must reboot the device to perform the installation and configuration of this new tool. So that is what we are going to do. Once we have restarted the device or the computer, we have opened Visual Studio and we already have here the project that we had created previously. Let's select on this project to open it. And once we have successfully opened it, notice that at the top we no longer have that legend that said Android emulator that we had previously, but we already have this option of the virtual device that we created earlier. Then we can proceed to click on this button to start the emulator. Here we have it already. And once the emulator has been initialized correctly, we are going to click again on this option to carry out the deployment of the application in it. And we see that after carrying out this process, we get this error message that we see at the bottom. It is possible that this error appears or not, but in case it happens to you, what we have to do is to open the location of this project by right clicking on the name of the project we will indicate that we want to open the folder where this project is located. We will proceed to close Visual Studio and as part of the folder of this project, we will delete the bin and OBJ folders. Once we have done this, we're going to start Visual Studio again. We open the project and let's try to launch the application again. You can see that this time the deployment has been correct in the emulator. We already have here the initial .NET MAUI application being executed as part of this emulator that we have installed. It was very important that you see this error so that you can see the way to correct it in case you find it. The only thing that this application does is that it contains different elements that we can visualize how they look on the platform. And we have this nice purple button that if we press it, we see how the counter that we have on the right side increases. Due to the size of the device that we are using, this number is being hidden. There is a very simple way to fix it and it is opening the file main page.saml that we see here. Going to this tag that says current count equal to zero. And instead of center and expand, we're going to use, for example, fill and expand. With this change, we're going to restart the application. We already have this label positioned in a different way. And if we click on this button, we see how this counter is increasing as we click on the button. This is how our .NET MAUI based application looks like. And we're going to understand more about this so-called SAML code as we go through the different lessons. Then congratulations, you have created your first .NET MAUI based application.